Silver fans, this is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, and entertainment. And hey, as you can see by watching my videos, I treat each one of them as if they are a piece of artwork. And if you appreciate that effort, please give a like. And if you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe. As that train keeps a rolling down the track. Hey, Harlan J. Burke is slamming today. Uh, as you could see, uh, there's lots of customers in the shop, lots of action, and Russ was kind enough to grant me another interview. So sit back and enjoy. All right, hey, Russ, hey, thanks for having me back to your shop here. It's uh, quite an honor. It's always, T. Uh, you know, I visit a lot of coin shops and I've been telling a few of the uh, coin shop owners that I had the opportunity to do an interview at Harlan J. Burke and their eyes light up, man. Uh, this place is very well known uh, everywhere. So one question that uh, you know people were asking uh, based on our last video mm -hmm. was, uh, is this dude strapped with a couple 45s <laughs> or what, man? Uh, and you know, <laughs> and that's not a uh, holster for a couple of pieces. It, uh, it sure isn't. Uh, mm -hmm. I got tired of wearing belts, I moved to suspenders, and then I moved to this rig. So just suspenders, just to keep my britches up. Okay, man, you're a young guy, you're, you're, you know a lot more about fashion than I do, but <laughs> uh, the, the folks were curious about that. Uh, speaking of the people who watched the last video, uh, have any of your customers mentioned they saw you on uh, my video? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've had a couple people come in, um, you know, just from the video, we had a gentleman drive up all the way from, from Kentucky um, oh, on a whim, which was great. Yeah. It was really, really neat. And uh -huh. uh, even just yesterday, I was uh, I was out at a social function, gentleman I'd never met before in my entire life. <laughs> and uh, about halfway through the night, he kind of looked at me and he goes, have you been on any YouTube videos lately? <laughs> I said, you know, I sure have. Uh -huh. And sure enough, he'd actually seen your video and we got to talking, so. The power of YouTube, man, it's pretty incredible. YouTube. And I know the guy you're talking about from Kentucky. He emailed me and he asked me a few questions and I encouraged him to come. And so glad he made it. So Absolutely. I'll have to touch bases with him. Uh, let's start by talking a little stacking. I know your forte is numismatics and we'll get to that in a minute. But just let me ask you the like the what's going on in the world. Uh, I just came back from Florida uh, and in everywhere from Fort Lauderdale to Oak Forest, Illinois. Uh, silver seems to be drying up. Uh, at the coin shops I go to. Uh, you guys experiencing that here? We are starting to experience some of that. Um, right now, it's not that there's a shortage of silver necessarily. What seems to be happening is a lot of the distributors and the private mints cannot keep up with demand. Um, we are seeing premiums skyrocket for things. I mean, it's, it's getting a little ridiculous. Like for us right now, um, eagles are thirteen dollars over. Silver eagles are thirteen dollars over. That's your price. Like that's, that's that's how. Well, that's not our price, but that's it, it's pretty darn close to that. Okay. Um, our prices, you know, our prices from our distributors are getting up, and the thing that's hurting us more than anything is the lead times. Yeah. Um, you know, we 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 shift a lot of silver out of here, and even to get you know generic one ounce rounds, we're talking you know anywhere from three to six week. Mm -hmm. um, turnaround times to get any stock in. That's crazy. I'm, I'm all the other report that I'm hearing is that uh, there's less people coming into the shops to sell and uh, silver seems to be in strong hands right now. So a little bit, we saw when silver, when silver and gold, you know, really hit their run, you know, we did have some dumping going on. Um, and we get the occasional little bit um, of people selling, but, um, yeah, I would say that that's, that's definitely true for the most part. More people are holding on to their metals. Um, e even now, even with gold, when it hit like over two grand a few weeks ago, we were seeing people come in and, and still buy quantities. Oh yeah. It's kind of amazing. Uh, you know, the, the old adage is, you know, uh, buy low, sell high. But whenever prices bump up, people get that FOMO. And of course they want to buy. And I can't seem to say that I blame them. Absolutely. Considering what's going on in the world and all the circumstances and, the economy, uh, it, you know, 
stackers uh, are, are not only <laughs> being validated, uh, uh, but I think some of their friends are starting to listen too. Uh, I actually really think so. Um, we've gotten recently a lot of first time buyers of gold and silver and a lot of people just starting to dip their toes. But I mean, we've had some people that have never bought metals before that are spending, you know, 10, 20, $30,000 in a go. Wow. And okay. it's, it's definitely a thing that I think is, is catching on for the general public. Okay. Um, I think stackers for a long time had kind of a reputation for being maybe a little paranoid or maybe a little doomsday, but yeah. I think people are really finally starting to wake up to, you know, the value that precious metals have in, you know, just the average person's hands. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, generics, I, a, do you have any generics? And B, uh, what are they uh, going for today? Yeah, so I've got um, I've got a lot of generics um, right now. Um, they're all pretty much the same design, but right now we're at like four and a half over for generics. Four and a half? That's lower than most places I've seen. Uh, you're not going to believe this, but I was just when I on that Florida trip. There's a guy there uh, selling, and and it's flying out the door. He's selling generics for seven dollars and twenty-five cents over spot, wow. and again, he hardly had any left because it's flying out the door. Um, so it's kind of crazy. The four and a half is the lowest I've seen in a long time, Russ. Yeah, I mean we're we're very fortunate. You know, we, we do do a lot of business, so we're able to order a lot more in quantity. We're able to keep our prices down that way, and then you know we're able to hopefully keep our customers happy and keep their price low as well. Okay. How about junk? Do you have any uh, junk silver? I do. Um, I've got plenty of, um, you know, pre-64 constitutional stuff. That stuff right now, we're still at right about 22 times face okay. um, that we're going for. Yeah. Um, that actually seems to be less popular lately. Really? It's something I've noticed. There's a lot less call for than there used to be. Okay. I wonder why that is. You know, I'm not sure. I think it has some to do with the the ease of um, keeping your silver. It's a lot easier to keep a 10 ounce bar than a whole lot of face yeah. around. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people are finally realizing that, you know, even though it's not from a governmental mint or facility, it's still good silver and they can still put it away and have that peace of mind. And speaking of those 10 ounce bars, is that your most popular product or? Um, you know, we do a lot of 10 ounce bars, but we also do a lot of one ounce rounds. Um, we probably do more one ounce rounds a week than we do 10 ounce bars, but when we do 10 ounce bars, we do, we do pretty good quantity. Um, okay. There's really not as many people that used to, um, that I've noticed come in for like a 10 ounce bar. People are trying to buy, you know, three, five, even 10. I see. Um, all right. I've got a big question here. Uh, and this one's dedicated to a guy named Donald in New Mexico. Uh, one of my viewers, 2022 Libertas. You guys are the biggest, baddest, most well-known coin shop in, uh, you know, in North America. Uh, are you got a beat on those 2022s, man? Come on. I, I wish I had a beat on 2022 Libertas. Um, <laughs> have you heard at all as to when they're coming out? I have not heard anything no clue. about them. Oh. All right. Well, listen, as soon as you find out, you know who to call, man. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> all right. Uh, how about vintage? Has, uh, has that perked up at all? I noticed, uh, and I'll show in the, uh, in, in the video some of your vintage stuff you have. You, you got a decent amount of that today? Um, I do have some. Um, as fast as we get vintage stuff, it generally flies off. I bet. Um, people really, really like it. Um, Angle hards, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of angle hard bars, um, a lot of more kind of niche refineries, you know, a lot of stuff from the '80s that you know are still really, really popular. So. Okay, cool. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to do some shopping. I've got a ton of customers here. I'm going to let you get back no. to business, but uh, you know I'm going to find something here, and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun looking around. So uh, thanks for the time, Russ. I really appreciate it, and uh, to your coworkers as well that have kind of had to put up with my setup here. I appreciate it very much as well. Absolutely. Take these. All right, buddy. Hey, we've reached the point in the video where I show you what I purchased, but first, a special shout out to my channel members, and if you've ever been curious about becoming a channel member, the information on that is down in the video description. Thank you for your consideration. Hey, thank you everybody so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. All that talk about vintage silver got me to thinking 
I needed to add this piece from the National Refining Systems to my stack collections. 10 ounces, 340 bucks, only about $40 more than generics. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh?